Hey, what's up guys? Today I'd like to explain why I choose the two-handed greatsword over the two-handed maul. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I've had many uh, occasions where someone is asking me why I choose the two-handed greatsword or the maul. They say, oh, you're losing damage, it's not strong, etc. I think that's because there's a lot of uh, popular streamers that use the maul. Um, I don't know if they actually did the math to test to see which one's better. But I'm going to explain why I choose the two-handed greatsword over the mall. Alright, so in order to understand why I do this, first we have to understand damage mitigation. And um, to know how much damage you mitigate, it's, a, it's quite a simple formula. You just do your level times 1000. So I'm veteran 16, which is the equivalent of saying level 65. So that means that 100% damage mitigation is 65,000. Now, thankfully there are things such as hard cap, so the highest you can get your um, damage mitigation is 50%, which is 32,500. Alright, with that in mind, um, the maul ignores 20% of your opponent's armor. So, in order for it to be on equal playing field as the two-handed greatsword, that means that the 20% damage penetra uh, armor penetration we have to equate to an increase of 5% damage, just like the greatsword. So, 5% damage mitigation is equal to 3,250. And I got that number by multiplying 65,000, which is 100% damage mitigation, times 0 0.05. All right? And so, in order to figure out how much armor your opponent must have in order to reduce it by 3,250, you just do 3,250 times 5. That will give you 16,250 for physical resistance. So in order for the maul to do the same damage as a greatsword, your opponent must have at least 16,250 physical resistance. Now a lot of you thinking, well that's pretty easy. I mean, if you do, even if you do 7 out of 7 medium armor, and you get like something that increases your uh, physical resistance and your spell resistance by 25,280, then that should get you around that mark easily. Well, here's another thing to consider. As a Nightblade, you should be using Surprise Attack. Surprise Attack applies Major Fracture, which reduces your opponent's armor by 5,280. All right? So that means that in order for the Maul to do the same damage as the two-handed sword, you have to be your opponent. Uh, your opponent's physical resistance has to be at least 21,530. And the way I got that is I took that original number, 16,250, and I added 5,280, because that's how that's the armor for which your opponent's going to have after you apply major fracture. So that is why I use the two-handed sword, and it's because. In order for the Maul to do more damage, you will literally be have, having to fight a tank. Somebody who has at least 21,530 physical resistance. There are not many opponents out there that wear full set of heavy, or even the majority of their armor being heavy. And that's why I choose a two-handed sword. Now, another thing I'd like to add to this discussion is that um, the Nord passive is not affected by any means of penetration, whether it be from sharpened, the Maul, or the Champion System. Which means, no matter what your defense rating is, when you when your, when your armor gets, redu gets reduced by a certain amount, and you have a certain amount of damage mitigation, you always add plus 6% as a Nord. And um, yeah, I think that pretty much concludes the discussion on why I choose a great sword over the Maul. I also like to add that for my sword, I, I also put in, um, I always have Sharpen on it, and I also put points in the champion system for penetration. So I still get a roughly around 20% um, ignore armor with my two-handed great sword. And I think that's a good um, hybrid. So that way you're efficient against all forms of DPS opponents. And you're still effective against heavy armor opponents. Alright, well anyways, I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you guys later.